Hi, welcome to Citizen Survival Plan. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today, I'm going to talk about radio rules that the FCC has, but doesn't really enforce or care about. The first one is you can only transmit GMRS frequencies on a GMRS radio. Let's do a quick explanation on what is GMRS and FRS. This is a list of 22 simplex channels, because that's what I'm really talking about today. Simplex just means it's a single frequency that you're on, and you and someone else are transmitting back and forth on that. It's 22 channels. There is different power levels, and this really has to do with the manufacturer that's making the radio that has to follow these rules, not so much you. So when they make a FRS or a GMRS radio, the frequencies are identical, the power levels are different. Let me explain. This is a ham radio, and this is a Baofeng K5 Plus, and it is a ham radio. So technically, it would be against the rules to type in the GMRS frequencies, which I have in my ham radio and use. And this is 10 watts of power. Because it's a ham radio, it doesn't have the power restrictions that this has. This is a GMRS official radio, and you are still technically required to have a license just to transmit on the simplex channels. And today we're not talking about repeaters. You will need a license to get on the repeaters because people will ask for that license. Now this is a Paw Patrol radio. This transmits on channel 12 GMRS or FRS. And this transmits GMRS channel 12. Now this Paw Patrol radio, you can see it's connecting, is probably a quarter of a watt. The whole point to this video is you could use this or this that you technically need a license for and transmit with more power and nobody is really going to know the difference. Now we're going to get into how the FCC can measure power and some other things later in the video, but generally speaking, they aren't really going to be able to tell or more importantly, they're not going to care that you are doing this. There is ways for the FCC to measure how much output your radio is putting out, depending on what license you have, but they would have to hook it up to a power meter. That is peak envelope power, and they would have to test it. So unless you're handing your radio over to get tested by the FCC, it doesn't really matter. Now, there is another way for the FCC to measure this or radio people to measure this. It's called ERP. That's effective radiated power. This is a less precise way to measure power, and it depends on distance, how far you are from the person measuring it, and just a lot of different factors. It's not very precise. So even if you got a, let's say, GMRS radio or a ham radio that was 100 watts, it was like a mobile, and you pushed 100 watts on one of these GMRS frequencies, no one is really going to care, but you are skirting the line of what is legal at that point. Your handhelds are just not going to matter that much if you're transmitting 10 watts or 5 watts. You're not ever really going to get caught. That's my opinion. If you need to consult a lawyer, go ahead. Another FCC rule that exists that is not really enforced is people need a GMRS license to transmit on GMRS channels 1 to 22. This does not go for the repeater channels, but people use the GMRS frequencies, the simplex radio to radio frequencies all the time with no license. I want to talk about an example of everyday lawbreakers that people that bend and break these rules all the time and nothing really ever happens. So there is a bowling alley slash arcade that we take our kids to. And I see them all running around with Baofangs. They have UV5Rs. That They might be the GMRS version. But either way, even if they're transmitting simplex and not using repeaters, they are still required to get a license for everyone using that radio. And it's a business doing it. So they're all, I think it's even listed on radio reference, they're all on a certain GMRS channel or FRS. So they are actually breaking the law operating 
on GMRS or FRS frequencies, especially because of the radio that they're using. Now, if everyone at that business ran around with Paw Patrol radios or an actual FRS radio, it would be more legal. But I see them using Baofeng radios. So I know that they're using a GMRS version of that. And I've looked at the radio. It is officially a GM. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I remember looking at it and looking it up. And so, so I know that they're breaking the rules, but my point is I don't care and no one really cares. These frequencies are basically license free. Now, I will say if you ever want to jump onto a GMRS repeater, and that is a radio tower that is operating on two different frequencies, and it boosts your signal over a much larger area. If you don't know what a repeater is, it is just a better piece of radio equipment that your radio can tap into and boost your signal. You will need a license when you jump onto a GMRS repeater. So if you ever wanted to use one of those, you will need your license and people will ask for your call sign when you get on there. But if you're just using radio to radio communications, a license is probably not even worth purchasing. Now going back to, can you transmit GMRS on a ham radio? This is another example of people breaking or bending this rule that no one cares about. I am a ham radio operator and a GMRS radio operator, and I'm not the only one that does this. Most hams do this. You get a UHF VHF radio and you put your GMRS frequencies, which are 462 and 467, in with all of your UHF and VHF frequencies and you program them into the radio and use them. The only thing is when I jump onto a GMRS repeater, I just have to notate that I have to throw my GMRS call sign out, not my ham. I have two different call signs, which is really annoying. And this is a really good way for the FCC, in my opinion, to almost help some of these radio companies just sell more radios. Because if you're a ham, a lot of us hams are GMRS people too. And we have to, we technically have to purchase two different radios to transmit ham frequencies and then GMRS frequencies. They have to be labeled and certified to transmit on those frequencies. All in all, it is a stupid rule and law that no one cares or follows. The only people that seem to care about this are commenters on YouTube saying that the FCC will track you down and arrest you if you do this. That bowling alley arcade that's in my town has been doing this for years now and no one has done anything about it and nobody will or cares that they are doing it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.